So people think that med school is pretty glamorous, but it isn't. I've been living out of a suitcase for the past three weeks, and I probably will for the next few months. Turn left while, on Oso Parkway. While doing interviews and um, doing audition rotations, just everything. It's it's a lot. So we're going to the plastic surgery clinic that I work at for the next week or so. This is like one of the patient rooms. So, and this is a cool sculpting machine. What cool sculpting is basically kills your fat without surgery, like lipo. These are silicone breast implants. they don't leak out anymore. This is where people get their Botox. This is the operating room where in-office procedure happens. This is where patients look at themselves in the mirror. So my first day here was actually a facelift, a full facelift or actually just from here to here and then we I've seen an abdominal plasty here and I've also seen some fat grafting here I know it sounds crazy but it happens in this room look there's a little light surgery light and everything is sterile this is the locker room yeah so you just grab stuff like so and then you grab a hat shoe covers always have to have a hat and yeah this is the room it's seven o'clock started at six ready to go Hi everyone, welcome back. So I finished my plastics rotation and I just wanted to come here to share some things with you that I've learned that I think is good for all aspects of medicine and not just um, plastics. So first let's talk about needles. So they all come in sizes, 70, 60, 50. The greater the number, the smaller or thinner the string. So when you're suturing on someone's face, make sure you use a bigger number like 60 or 70. And then there's also labels like P, PS, PC. And what that means, PC means conventional cutting, which means that the cutting side of the on the needle is on the concave side, while PS is on the convex side. So when you're using a PC, it's easier to cut through tissue. And I would suggest always using just a PS. So the green nylon and blue proline are non-absorbables. These are absorbables and the fastest are obviously fast absorbs then chromix and then we move on to monocryls and then vicryls and then the PDS lasts the longest around nine months. And another thing I learned is how to make drains out of gloves and I'll show you that right now. So say that you're in the ER and these are the only things you had. This is your sterile gloves. What you want to do So these are your sterile gloves and you want to put a drain in someone who has a deep wound and they'll come back to the ER to get it released if you say you don't have anything like a JP drain or something like that. These are your scissors and this, this is just a suture removal kit. I would be also wearing sterile gloves so what you can do is
this, you cut off a little piece of it, and this is a great drain. And you say you have a wound, you can put this in there, tack it down with a non-absorbable, and in a week, pull it out. It becomes a great drain. And say you need a bigger one, you can just cut off the whole finger, and that would be your drain. And that's it. Another thing that I learned are maximum dose of uh, local anesthetics. So say lidocaine, lidocaine with epi, uh, babivacaine, babivacaine with epi. How much can you give a person? And there are max doses. So babivacaine, it's 2.5 megs per keg, and then with epi is 3 megs per keg. So you multiply that by um, their weight and concentration to get your max dose. And the same thing with lidocaine, which is um, 4.5 megs per keg and 7 megs per keg with epi. Um, one interesting fact that I've learned is that, you know how in med school you're always taught don't use with epi for things like the nose, the ears, toes, fingers, because it vasoconstrict and causes tissue necrosis? Well, <laughs> my plastic surgeon says that is complete BS because epinephrine has a half-life around two hours, two to three hours, and with someone who is well vascularized or well perfused, um, it's cleared before tissue necrosis sets in, which is around six hours. So, makes sense. Um, and some interesting facts that I learned is that one, you can never get rid of cellulite. And what cellulite is, is um, the contours of your fat. And the reason why some people don't see that is because it depends on skin thickness. The older you get, the thinner your skin becomes and the more cell cellulite you get. There's no creams or even lipo can get rid of that. If we learn a way to thicken skin, then we can get rid of cellulite. Um, another thing I learned is about scar revision and scar management. Um, the best way to have the best, or the best way to induce good healing and avoid keloids, it's compression and decrease of uh, tissue um, tissue tension. So when you do get a keloid, you can inject a steroid right into the keloid, and Asian Americans tend to develop keloids more than a person with lighter skin. So the goal is to inject it right into the keloid. The mistake most people make is that they inject too much or under the keloid and it causes breakdown of the tissue and then they'll have denting, um, basically a crater and then still the keloid and that's very unfortunate. An adverse effect of injecting ke um, keloids is um, telangiectasias. Um, yeah, and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I am currently on my audition rotation and that video will be coming soon. So I'll see you guys next time. So this is the surgery center where we do all our surgeries and right outside is a koi fish pond. Bougie ass shit if I do say so myself. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all next time. Get into med school and what are the kind of steps, and I thought that I would share my story and it will give you an idea of which roads that you can take.